So today I wanted to share with you a particular orchid that decided to grow itself upon an unexpected form of media. I guess you could call it that. And because I didn't pay it that close of attention, I didn't even know what its true agenda was until it was too late. And as you can see, in this particular area right here, my orchids are basically jumbled up all together. So it is very easy to just walk past here and completely overlook that particular orchid. And here it is right here. Do you see it? Okay, how about now? Do you see that Vanda now? This particular semi terete Vanda right here was hidden by a massive root system that came from another Vanda, so I didn't have a good visual on this. And being that winter time is now coming about, I'm moving stuff around, preparing for the winter, and that is when I got a closer look at this. So let's take a closer look and find out what's really going on. Do you guys see what's really going on right here? Let's take an even closer look there. As you can see, this has physically and literally began to grow on this metal bird cage right here. And it has actually managed to latch on. It's attached to this bird cage right now. And if we take a look on the other side, you will literally see that root growing right into that metal mesh of that bird cage. So folks, this is actual living proof that for your more aggressive growing orchids, especially the ones with such a tremendous root system, it indeed can attach itself to whatever is nearby and just as long as it can get a hold of it, it indeed surely will. And just as a side note, to clarify, I am not recommending that you guys grow your orchids on metal because as a matter of fact, metal can be harmful to your orchids, so I definitely am not recommending that. And we all know that one of the main reasons our orchids actually have such a strong root system is for the simple fact that that is its growth habit, to attach itself to trees and other vegetation and also other media. So indeed, that is exactly what it will do. So you have to keep a vigilant eye on those roots because they can become so clingy and indeed attach themselves onto even surfaces that they are not supposed to. And to be honest with you folks, because I do have so many Vandas and sometimes they do grow closely together, I've had situations where they've actually interlocked and interlaced into one another where their roots were so tightly woven I had to literally cut them loose. And I hate to be such a home wrecker or in this case a root wrecker, but unfortunately it had to be done in order for me to separate them. So it is very important for us to move our orchids about from time to time just to ensure that they're not trying to have any extracurricular activities with any other orchid. And it is also just as important to keep a vigilant eye on them because they are such sneaky little critters that indeed like to roam. And as a matter of fact, I do recall a chit chat that I had with John Benedict in which he was telling me about a rambunctious orchid that he had in which would constantly try to attach itself to the entranceway of his home. So even on walls, folks, keep a watchful eye because they are cunning escape artists. And since we're already out and about in my garden looking at my Vandas, we might as well do an update on our Vanda pollination propagation project. And if you guys do not know what I am talking about, it's time for you guys to get with the program and do that by clicking on this video right here so you won't be left in the dark. And here we have the beautifully spotted Cindy Banks Bill's Choice and this particular blossom right here, as you can see, is well underway with making its pod. And this one right here is the Tessalata Cross with the Memoria Swanson. And as you can see, both spikes are coming into bloom. They will be ready to be propagated next week. And just as a brief side note, I cannot believe how fragrant these already are. They just started blooming yesterday and oh my, they are so sweetly fragrant. And here we have the spike of the Ben Jasmine and I would say this will be in bloom in a couple of days. 
And right here we have the other beautiful Cindy Banks. And as you can see, all of the blooms have fully opened. Now it is unfortunate because these two blossoms right here have been stripped of its pollen. But lucky for us, we do still have three more that we can use. And right here we have the Mimi Palmer with the huge blooms. And as you can see, they are ballooning up right here. Look at those swollen buds. I would say in a couple of days, these will also be in bloom. And this one right here is the spike of the Tatsurai. And as you can see, although it has been growing and it does have its buds forming, we still have quite a ways to go. So in this case, we're going to have to use the stored pollen that we have been storing inside of the house. So thank goodness for that. Now, if you guys don't know what stored pollen is, go ahead and click on that link. It'll take you right to that video and you can learn exactly how you are capable of doing that. So indeed, I will be quite the busy little bee and I hope you guys will join me for that adventure. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventures. Now, if you guys have also experienced how sneaky these critters can be, please be sure to let me know exactly how your orchids have tried to escape or grow onto surfaces they know that they should not. And make sure you guys post those comments below. I do hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, like, share, and subscribe, and join me on Facebook as well. Thank you guys so much, and as you guys already know, I do truly love and appreciate you guys all. I will see you guys later, and I'll also grow with you guys later as well. Bye-bye for now. Mwah.